Hey, what's going on guys? This is your dedicated video to polymorphism. We're gonna talk about the concepts and prepare ourselves as we move into that subject in code, just to get that concept down before we start typing junk out. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So the whole idea of polymorphism at a general level is that something can kind of uh, morph into different things depending on how we look at it. <laughs> and when I say that out loud, I sound crazy and it doesn't really make sense. But in the context of programming and object-oriented programming, polymorphism allows us to treat an object as different types of objects. And this really comes from that inheritance hierarchy. You know, just as an example, if we had a user class and then we had two derived classes, student and teacher, well, you can take a student and you can treat it like a user. Now I'm thinking in the concept of a web application or something like that. If you wanted to think more real life, you might change user to person, right? So the whole idea here is that, you know, if you see someone you know, and you know they're a student, you might go up to them and say, hey dude, how are classes? But if you go to a stranger, you don't necessarily know that they're a student. So you might just say, hey dude, how's the weather? So the way you would treat this person you're coming up to depends on the context. If you know that person, you know they're a student, you're probably gonna treat them like a student. But if you don't know, you're gonna treat them like a person. Well, the same exact thing applies in programming. You can treat a student as a student or as a person, or back to the original case, I'm gonna go with user. So that makes things like this possible. You can create a new student and assign it to a user. Makes sense. Or you can make it a student. That's fine too. You could also make a list of users and put both students and teachers in there. And the cool thing here is you can go through that list and you can tell the students and the teachers to do something such as work and they're gonna do the appropriate thing. The teachers are gonna go do research or hide in their office. The students might go study or go to parties, whatever students do. And we don't have to make some, some kind of crazy casing. We can just iterate through the loop and because we're talking to users in general, we can say something general and they're gonna do the appropriate thing.